Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you need to know as an investor. For more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on any or all of these stories, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. As you see on screen, the stock market has been doing exceptionally well, with the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 up 2% and 3.69% respectively. Right now, the world may be on edge due to political turmoil, but investors are celebrating because the S&P 500 recently entered a week at their all-time high. One of the reasons for this is due to lower inflation, earnings reports coming up, and a very resilient U.S. economy. Speaking about earnings reports, we are also going to go over how Netflix shares have recently surged ahead of their earnings report, which we'll be reporting on Tuesday. So feel free to keep an eye out for that one because it's going to be big. But let's talk more about that. Netflix is a video streaming platform, and not just any videos like YouTube, it is full on episodes and movies. And even though the competition is heating up in the streaming space, Netflix remains king. The TV show and movie streamer Netflix is anticipated to have a very positive earnings result on Tuesday. So for those of you who are invested into Netflix, then please buckle up because it's going to be an interesting ride. Then the day after when Netflix releases their earnings report, we see Tesla on Wednesday releasing theirs. This is going to allow Tesla to respond to their investors regarding cold weather and their electric vehicles because if you didn't know, electric vehicles don't really hold up that well in very intense heat or in very cold environments. Other big names which are reporting their earnings this week would be Intel, Verizon, as well as AT&T, and at the end of this video, we're going to be going over other very large companies that you need to be aware of which are also releasing their earnings reports. Now, what I'm really excited about is that the quarter four GDP data is going to be released on Thursday, and this is going to show the U.S. posting their best back-to-back -back quarters for economic growth since 2021, and this is going to increase the overall stock market and general enthusiasm among investors. So it's a fantastic time to be an investor right now. But that's not all investors have to look forward to. For instance, we also have a huge IPO coming up, or potentially a huge IPO coming up, and that would be none other than Sheen becoming a publicly traded company. Sheen, if you didn't know, is a top fashion brand. And if they IPO, which is going to happen later this year potentially, they could be worth up to 90 billion dollars. However, the problem with this is that the United States has scrutinized over Sheen's connection with China, and this has also happened vice versa to where China is scrutinizing Sheen for their connections with the United States. We even saw regulators launching a security review of this company, which may not be very good news, and here's why. This could either delay their IPO, which is their initial public offering, which would enable investors like you and I to invest into Sheen and make loads of money, or it could scrap the IPO altogether. But this would be the worst case scenario. The reason we say this is because last time China launched a similar review into Didi, soon this company was delisted. That means they were on the public stock stock market, and then they became delisted to where investors could no longer invest into this company. But in the best case scenario, they pass the review with flying colors, they get the green light, and we see a US IPO. In this case, their company would be worth approximately $90 billion for their valuation, considering that Sheen estimated to rake in around $30 billion worth of sales last year. So this could literally be one of the largest IPOs that investors should look forward to. However, I personally am looking forward to Reddit's IPO. But for more information on that, I would highly recommend you check out our last video where we talk about Reddit. But right now, I want to talk more about Tesla, because every time Tesla has been in the news lately, it's been negative. And I just want to quote straight from the article, which says, and I quote, last quarter, Chinese car maker BYD passed Tesla as the world's number one EV seller. Then versions of Tesla's Model 3 became ineligible for US tax credits worth up to $7.5,000 per car. 
Meanwhile, Teslas repeatedly cut prices of their vehicles over in Europe, and on top of that, the Cybertruck has had mixed reviews. So hopefully, Tesla's upcoming earnings report will be able to lift their share price. But honestly, right now, I am taking advantage of their cheap share price, and I am buying up this company, because anything between $200 and $220 for this company, in my opinion, is a steal, considering the immense amount of potential that this company has. But that's not all we have to look forward to. We also have SoFi Technologies posting their earnings on January 29th. And I anticipate, as well as the author of this article, believes that SoFi will beat the their revenue guidance and their earnings per share expectations for quarter four. It seems that analysts have repeatedly underestimated SoFi's potential in regards to the revenue and earnings per share, especially when it comes to 2024, and I think SoFi Technologies will become profitable. This earnings report is going to announce profitability for this company, and once they become profitable, they will remain profitable for the remainder of the year. Therefore, I think they will easily surpass expectations in both their revenue and earnings per share. Another reason I think this is that SoFi's management has an unblemished record, according to this article, of guiding conservatively, meaning that their conservative estimates normally come true and they haven't steered us wrong so far, and I don't think they're going to do that now. We already see investors start a pre-anticipatory run for their share price. It's already up 5.74% right now, and I think it could climb higher before their earnings. However, even if they do bring in good earnings, we could always see a pullback after a pre-anticipatory run, and I think investors who are invested into this company for the long term should take advantage of this inevitable pullback. But in the meantime, feel free to trade off of their volatility. Overall, I think SoFi is going to be a great company to invest in over the long term, and I can't wait for their upcoming earnings report on January 29th. Another stock favorite is in the news, and that is none other than Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies, and investors are hyped up right now considering that their share price recently reclaimed the 50-day moving average. As of right now, Palantir is anticipated to release their fourth quarter earnings on February 5th. Their stock also increased today close to 5% to close at $17.60. And this is despite Wall Street being pretty bearish and negative on a Palantir. We even saw a Morgan Stanley analyst last week caution Palantir investors to where he says, and I quote, While we think the U.S. commercial business is showing momentum, a sluggish international commercial business coupled with a now mature government business may make it difficult for the company to meet consensus expectations, which call for growth to accelerate in 2024 to 19% from 16.5% in 2023, end quote. However, I disagree with him. I have already projected that Palantir will bring in around 19% for a CAGR in regards to the revenue, and I think they will be able to beat expectations in that regard, and overall, Palantir is a pretty solid company to invest into. On the bright side, we see Palantir's relative strength rating, which currently stands at around 95 out of a possible score of 99, which is extremely good. On top of that, the good news gets even better considering that Palantir's composite rating is 96 out of 99. So again, I think this company is pretty strong. Clearly, this company still needs to grow into their valuation and they are trading at a premium, but if you are a long-term investor in this company, you should do pretty well as long as you practice proper risk management and not overexpose yourself more than 5% initial portfolio allocation to any singular risky growth company, including Palantir Technologies. We also saw United Airlines beat on their earnings and give strong full-year guidance. For instance, United Airlines rose around 5.2% after the market closed because they beat quarter four estimates and they also issued a very confident outlook for the year of 2024. We also saw strong earnings per share estimates of between nine and $11, while the consensus estimate hovers at around $9.48, which is very good. The CEO of the company even said, despite unpredictable headwinds, we delivered on our ambitious EPS target that few thought possible and set new operational records for our customers. He goes on to say, Looking ahead, we expect these trends to continue, and United is incredibly well positioned to capitalize on them and to deliver on our short and long term financial targets. End quote. And honestly, I believe them. They are doing exceptionally well, especially for an airline stock, and that's why they have a consensus buy rating among Seeking Alpha authors, and I would highly recommend you look further into this company if you want to own more airline stocks. Speaking about fantastic stocks, Next Era Energy, according to a Guggenheim 
Anaheim analyst is the best or most ideal company to buy in the utility space. This analyst is so bullish and so positive. He said, if you could only own one utility stock in 2024, then next era energy is your stock pick. He is urging investors to buy, buy, buy. And he said that Next Era Energy is actually oversold right now and investors should jump on this opportunity. And in part, I agree with him. They're only trading at around $56 per share. They have very low short interest. Their revenue growth is over a 30% CAGR, coming in at 38.12%. Their dividend yield is 3.27%, which is really high. And their market cap is $117.48 billion, with a forward PE of around 18. This company is very well positioned and fundamentally solid. The analyst even said, and I quote, every reason why NEE, which is the stock ticker symbol for Next Era Energy, underperformed in 2023 is set to revert this year, including interest rates, renewable headwinds, NEP overhangs, Florida regulatory noise, among other items, end quote. So he's essentially saying, whatever caused this company to drop in their share price during the year of 2023, that is going to be be reversed in 2024 and it's going to act as a catalyst which will increase their share price. So again, I would recommend that you look further into this company before you make an investment decision. In other news, we saw DWACW skyrocket in their share price by 68%. Essentially, Digital World Acquisition will be used to take a private company public and that private company is Trump's media and technology group and if that becomes public, that is going to cause their share price to increase dramatically. But what's so special about Donald Trump's company? Well, essentially, investors are investing into this company because this is the company behind the Truth Social app, which is a competitor to Twitter, which is now known as X. So essentially, people are investing into DWAC or Digital World Acquisition because they could potentially take Trump Media and Technology Group public, which is the parent company to Truth Social. The reason for the recent excitement surrounding DWAC stock, which caused it to rally over 50%, is because Donald Trump did very well in Iowa politically. He won the Iowa caucus by a record margin of 30 points, with Ron DeSantis coming in second and Nikki Haley in third. Third. We also heard Ron DeSantis drop out of his campaign, which ended on Sunday, and he ended up endorsing Donald Trump. Now, again, this is not a politics channel. We are a stock channel. So I would highly recommend you trading off the volatility, either by getting in and selling at the top or shorting this company or whatever you want to do. However, you should know, as the article correctly points out, if former President Trump becomes the Republican nominee, which seems highly probable at this point, it would likely accelerate the adoption of the Truth Social platform, making digital world acquisition well positioned to be a top beneficiary as we roll into the election. So essentially, the better Donald Trump does, the higher this stock is going to go as a special purpose acquisition company and investors should take advantage of this. If not, even if you don't like Donald Trump, feel free to trade off of this momentum and make money. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make money. And when you see a stock jump by 68%, you might as well get on the bandwagon and try to sell at the top. Or since it's surged already so high in price, you know that it's going to have to come back down, so feel free to short it. Whatever you want to do, feel free to do that. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Speaking about stocks that are surging, we also saw Fisker stock, which is an electric vehicle company that we just reported on. Fisker has really been going through it. They dropped all the way down to a penny stock because of the headwinds that this company has experienced ever since they started to deliver their first vehicle, which is their first fully electric ocean SUV. We also saw the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as the NHTSA, scrutinize and file a claim against Fisker because of their braking system due to complaints from Fisker customers. But right now, investors do have a reason to cheer, and this is the reason why their share price jumped to 40%, and that's because a financial agreement related to an investor in a convertible notes offering due 2025 has increased the share price due to investor momentum. So let's talk about what this means for the company. Essentially, the investor agreed to convert some of the bond offering to equity, which now reduces Fisker's outstanding debt level from that offering to $324.5 million instead of $510 million. So they shaved off a boatload of debt. The Fisker CEO even said in a statement, and I quote, I am pleased that we were able to reach an agreement with one of our investors that will provide increased flexibility and better position us to execute on potential strategic business deals, end quote. 
Now, what I find interesting is that Fisker actually has a pretty strong balance sheet. Even though they just reduced their debt by $185.5 million, Fisker is sitting on around $625 million worth of cash and or cash equivalents on their balance sheet as of September 30th of 2023. Honestly, I'm still pretty skeptical about this company, but I do enjoy that their share price is increasing and I think that's good for investors. But again, don't get out of hand. The company is still a penny stock trading at around 92 cents. Now, could it surge? Absolutely. It most certainly can, but the competition is fierce in the EV space and we need to bet on the long-term winners. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you are personally invested into Fisker or not. Speaking about electric vehicles, we also have Rivian in the news, which is making a comeback. Rivian, ticker symbol R-I-V-N, is trading at $16 per share right now and they're up around 3.55%. Now, Rivian is in the news because they are benefiting from less competition in the EV space because a lot of companies are going bankrupt. On top of that, we need to take into consideration that their profit gross margins will increase later this year, which is very good news for Rivian investors. So I'm very excited to have this company make a full-blown comeback and we'll have to see and sit tight on any other news updates regarding Rivian. Lastly, we are entering into an earnings week in technology, especially since we've seen strength in companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom, Arm Holdings, and Micron Technology. So let's take a look on what's coming up. On January 23rd, we see Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Netflix like we talked about, Verizon like we talked about, Texas Instruments, General Electric, and Lockheed Martin. So that's going to be a very good day for investors. On Wednesday, Tesla is going to release their earnings like we talked about, Abbott Laboratories, which I personally am invested into, IBM, AT&T like we talked about, General Dynamics, which is a very good company, Las Vegas Sands, which I am invested into as well as CSX. On Thursdays, we have companies like Visa, Intel, like we talked about, Comcast, Union Pacific, American Airlines Group, Southwest Airlines, and Alaska Air Group. And on Friday, January 26th, we're going to see American Express as well as Colgate release earnings. So I'll keep you updated on the latest news stories and IPO updates as well as the stocks that are surging right now. So with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts on any or all of these stories. And with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.